In this video, we're going to talk about DSFW performance, specifically on your domain controllers, and one specific issue in particular. Uh, we're going to start with just looking at top, and we're sorting on memory. If you just you, you can do your help sign there, and to to look at uh, how to move, but it's just a shift and then the great the greater than sign key, and you can you know change it to uh, CPU by default, uh, CPU utilization. Or we're just going to look at memory right right now. As you can see, NDSD memory—that's what we're focusing on. It's this is we're trying to have a baseline standard of where we're at, and uh, this is about where we're at. It, it you can't really go completely off of this because NDSD memory doesn't always allocate uh, the memory, unused memory, back to the general pool, but to, it will uh, hold on to memory. And it has the the Google memory um, me Google memory allocator that will help allocate memory back to NDSD or not. So it sends it back to the to, to the Google memory allocator, which kind of holds on to it. And if it need doesn't need it, I mean it can expunge it back, uh, send it back to to the kernel memory wherever it needs to to go. Depending if you're using it a 32 or 64 bit as far as where what memory space uh, uh, you uh, you're using is built on you know if it's 32 or 64 bit but anyway not to get too much into the to the memory side of things uh we're just gonna it's, we just have a, a good baseline not a whole lot going on here now it's important when we're looking at performance uh there to look at the kdc log and i'll let's go over two tids and con end up concentrating on one of them so if you have a slow ser server this is a good tid to start with uh this this uh uh, troubleshooting logins and responsive DSFW servers. Your, it could be logins are taking a long time, 30 seconds, a minute, 30 minutes, something like that. You might see this error when buying exceeding 200 client connections. Anyway, this is a good place to, to start from. Let me update this. I think this is... There we go. It's... Uh, why that other one was there, but anyway, this is uh, so we're just gonna look at some some common things with with uh, DSFW and performance. And the number one area you want to look at is the KDC log, Kerberos. You're not gonna really see Kerberos go crazy in utilization or memory. Uh, it's single threaded, and Kerberos can get bogged down and start causing some some troubles. So what we want to do is look at some key uh, errors. The, uh, here's a decrypt integrity check failed. That means it's a bad password. So it could be a user or a workstation that has a bad password that's trying to log in over and over and over again. Uh, and here's a anyway. And we're gonna it talks goes into uh, this TID, uh, which we're actually gonna concentrate on this this specific TID with the duplicate workstation names that can cause high utilization. Uh, so this is a, if you want to sort it out. Uh, this is a good way of grepping uh, to to sort out the look through this error, find it. The A1 grabs the that line and then the line after it, uh, because the line after it is what really where your important information is at. The decrypt integrity check error uh, failed line just tells you that that's what that, that's what it is. But we're going to concentrate on the second line. So that's one locked out. That is somewhat of a good thing somewhat of a bad thing as well if you see if you're seeing that uh, a lot you might have a workstation that is getting locked out all the time and what what we're gonna do is uh, uh, get if you see this error the decrypt integrity check error and no lockout errors that means you don't have an intruder lockout policy and we're gonna go over how to set that up so that you can help prevent your domain controller from becoming unresponsive so and, uh, and then the uh, third one is a uh, client not found error and we're not really going to talk about that one but uh, that's what you this this is where you're a starting point and we're going to go to uh, this duplicate workstation name and go over uh, this the specific error so what we can do is uh, we're, we're going to look at our KDC log and see if we have any errors Right now, as you can see, it, we can just, it looks like it started up. We have a login, an administrator logged in uh, just fine. Everything's looking good. So there's really uh, no error that we see. Let's continue to tail this log and bring up another workstation. Now, this second workstation, it will have a works, the workstation name 
will be the same as the first one that's that's uh, as an, as another one that's already joined to the domain. So let's uh, let we'll wait for that to come up. Actually, you know, I'll talk talk a little bit about it right here. Let's look at it in our uh, uh, in the tree here. So we can see we have a workstation. We have the first one that's joined with this name, sets a password, logs in. Second one comes, sees that this object exists, and then goes, hey let me set a new password for you. So the first workstation that joined, its password is no longer valid. The second one that joined, its, its password is is the correct one. So as we can see here, every three seconds we're getting this decrypt and check recheck failed error. So we, this can cause some some issues. So we'll see NDSD utilizations going up a little bit more, memory is starting to creep up a little bit more. It's nothing really glaring but it's going up a little bit more than normal. Um, so it, it, like I say, NDSD, it's not the, the tall tail for, for uh, uh, slow logins. It's the KDC log is the number one area you want to look at. So we can see we have two workstations with the same name trying to join or trying to log in and uh, uh, one of them has a bad password and not able to do it. So let's go and stop this and and we'll just we'll just do a, a a1 and for decrypt just check on that and then go over this error in a little more in detail so we have the password we, we see that we have a bad password on the first line the second line is the workstation that it's coming from so we see the IP address and we see the account and we know that this is a workstation because not just by the name but because it has a dollar sign at the end of the name so that means it is a workstation otherwise this would be a user so we know that this workstation is trying to log in and over and over again and it has a bad password it could be the workstation tried to change its password and it didn't take uh, it changed on the workstation itself but not its account or it could be a duplicate workstation account and so uh, we're going to concentrate on the duplicate workstation uh, account if it's a workstation that the password's invalid, you just have to reset the password or rejoin it to the domain. Uh, either way, we'll uh, let me just clear and do it again. We can see we've had 55 times this workstation, this IP address has failed for this workstation. And if we did it again, we're at 58. So if there was more workstations or even users, they would be displayed here as well. We'd see the count and it'd all be sorted with the greatest one at the bottom with, with this search. So we can see 58 times it's done that. We can take a look at the timestamps in the KDC log and get an idea as what time frame that that's happened. So we want to, what we want to do is stop this from happening. So let's go to this TIT and it, the, as the TIT talks about, uh, setting up an intruder lockout policy. Now there's two ways you can do it. The number one way you want to definitely do is on your GPO because most likely your workstation is going to be in the computer's container unless you've moved it out. Uh, you're, the only way if it continues to reside in the workstation's container, the only way you're going to be able to handle this is with a GPO. Uh, so we're going to use the default GPO. We're going to go ahead and at, edit it and go to Windows settings, security settings, account policies, and then we have our account lockout policy. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. The threshold, we're gonna enable that, and we'll, set it, we'll start it at five. Five invalid login attempts, and we say okay, and it's gonna set it for a duration of 30 minutes, and then it's gonna unlock the account after that. So, so the account will be locked out for 30 minutes and then reset so that it can log in again that's the minimum I would do you might want to bump it up you might already have uh, an intruder lockout policy in your company so if you do you, it should take care of the computers container as well so you're, you're set if you don't you want to at least go to the default and enable one and so that uh, workstations will get locked out so we say okay on that and let's go ahead and go back to our, our log here. If we tail this, we see decrypt and check check failed, failed, and as soon as this kicks in, we'll start to see uh, the uh, 
uh, account lockout. Okay, there, it just kicked off account lockout. You can see it right there. We're tailing the log. We know that it is taking place. So the, the, work, the good workstation and the bad workstation, they're locked out. So you might have some problems with your, you're not able to do something on your workstation. You're, not, uh, you're trying to bring up MMC, you can't do something. You can't map a drive, something along those lines without being prompted for a password. If you see that, again, you might want to check for account locked out and see if that workstation has been locked out. Not just the user, but the workstation. So we can see this workstation has been locked out. So it, uh, that is one way to handle it. The other, uh, and that's the w one way we want to start out with, uh, the other is if you have a workstations container. So sometimes people will take and have a container for workstations. You want to keep it unique if you have multiple ones. You always want to make sure that the workstations are in their own container if you're going to move the workstation object. Uh, so in this case we're just going to call it a workstations being under the A container. We're going to set an intruder lockout policy and right here so we've got one set already so just just go ahead and enable it if, it, if there's not one already set. Again five if it's for specifically for a workstation, you might want to just do three uh, um, to lock it out a little faster. It's it's up to you again. You might want to extend the time frame as well uh, from 30 minutes to to an hour. Again, this is all up to you. You might have some company policies on what that setting should be. So if you work, if you move a workstation, do this. I I would set it at the the workstation level as well as the GPO. So that is how to uh, at least keep it from causing problems on your network. The second part, after, after stopping it from logging in all the time, disabling the account, is to set up wins. So it's real easy to do. Just go into your uh, etsysamba.conf and all you have to do is at the very end of the global section just add win support equals yes. Only one server should have this in a network. So if you already have a Win server set up, don't set up another one. If you don't set up on one domain controller, only one, and let that be. Uh, it, it, the Win's protocol is not routable, so it's not going to go to another network. If you have multiple networks, uh, same domain and multiple networks, so you might have to set up another one or set up a proxy, or there's other ways you can go about uh, doing this. But we start with with this Win support. When support yes, when you go to join, it will let you know that there's already a workstation with that same name out there. Uh, another thing you can do on your workstations, you could probably set up a GPO to do this as well. In your network settings, uh, properties, IP, and again, I'm doing this on XP because it's I can run have four VMs going on my box that doesn't have a whole lot of memory. So anyway, we're we clicked on that adv advanced tab, and now we are back in win. We have uh, our settings. We're going to click on wins, and we're going to point it to the win server. So we just make sure that it's it goes right there. On top of that, we want to disable the net BIOS uh, over TCP. So yeah, that's not critical. Neither, neither of these are real critical, but they will help with uh, with duplicate workstations if you if you have that set up. So. Uh, anyway, these those are some things to help uh, prevent it from happening, and then when it does happen, ha prevent it from causing slowness on your network. Again, the TID is up here that you w would like to concentrate on is uh, uh, 7006851. Uh, so I hope that this has been helpful to you and helps you with your performance on your DSFW server. Thanks for watching.